Everybody, the holiday hating freak show is here to tell you once again why anybody that enjoys Thanksgiving, Christmas, or any of those stupid fucking holidays is actually a goddamn idiot. Exhibit 75,694. So let's look at this. XBB15 may be most transmissible subvariant of Omicron to date, scientists warn. Hmm. 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 Really? So once again, let's recap here. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, words, English, English language. I believe in the English language. Control, what does control mean? To manage it, right? To theoretically isolate it, right? To hopefully reduce, right? Prevention, what does prevention mean? To try to make it not even happen in the first place, you know? Suicide prevention, right? You know, we have uh, cancer prevention, right? So centers, multiple, there's multiple centers for disease. What is a disease? I don't know. COVID sounds like a disease to me. Control and prevention. Control and prevention. So now that we've identified and defined basic words in the English language, let's look at what the CDC was doing over the last couple of months. The CDC has a reporting guideline of reporting information on new variants once variants reach around at least 1% of the total COVID pool. So 100% would be all confirmed and identified and recorded COVID cases. Now we know that that's a fraction of the bucket of COVID cases in this country because most people test and don't ever, you know, don't ever tell anyone about it, especially the CDC, right? So that would be the 100% is the little bit of data we have. So once a new variant reaches 1%, the CDC is supposed to report it. XBB hit that 1% threshold a week before Thanksgiving. A week before Thanksgiving, the CDC announced this new variant on December 30th, five days after Christmas. So they identified the variant, figured out how dangerous it was, and then told nobody until nearly a week after Christmas. Now, I see that information and I say, throw in the towel, lock them up. That's what I see. I say, march Rochelle Walensky out in handcuffs. Hey, once again, Donald Trump's administration brought back the death penalty. Now, I am morally opposed to the death penalty, which is why I want to control and prevent COVID from spreading throughout this country. However, if we are going to execute black people for doing crimes that they never committed, why don't we have that same standard for people that covered up a disease that is going to cause the deaths of tens of thousands of people? Why is that? We have no problem as a country executing black people for robbing a 7-Eleven of $250 in 1987. That's fine. Kill them all, right? As far as America is concerned. But people that are responsible for the deaths of millions, they get to walk free? Now, once again, I am opposed to the death penalty. I would prefer not to kill anybody. I would prefer for the state to kill nobody, which in this instance would mean Rochelle Walensky should resign because she is a murderer. She is a murderer. You ask me this, right? Why do I pick on the CDC so much? These are the people in charge. 
I am some stupid, dumb fuck high school dropout in my bedroom. I'm not in charge. I'm not paid by the government. For the same reason that I'm against police brutality, why am I against police brutality? Because I do not think the state should inflict violence on its constituents. That is why I'm opposed to the death penalty. That is why I am opposed to police brutality. That is why I'm opposed to prison brutality. And that is why I'm opposed to capitalism. And for the same reason that I am opposed to the CDC's current governance of this pandemic. Again, their own guidelines say that they must report on new variants once it reaches above 1%. They waited until it reached 40% percent prevalence in COVID population, 40 percent, it's over. And then Joe Biden said, yo, there's going to be new variants coming out of China. China, China, they got new variants. Wuhan flu coming back. That's what Biden said. Meanwhile, the most deadly and transmissible variant that we have seen has originated in New York and Connecticut. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? The American government says China's zero COVID policy is authoritarian. China's like, all right, fine. We'll do it. We'll let COVID rip just like America. And so America got exactly what they asked for. And then they turned around to China and said, fuck you anyway. Meanwhile, the United States had a new super variant and they kept it secret from the motherfucking world for two months. Isn't that interesting? A month and a half, I guess. Isn't that just, isn't that a little strange? Doesn't that fucking, so we're so concerned about a new variant from China. Why would a new variant happen in China and not Europe? Why would a new variant happen in China and not Canada? What is so special about China? Oh, because they're Asian people and we don't like Asian people in this country. That's why Joe Biden does not like Asian people in this country. Where's hashtag stop Asian hate? When Donald Trump was trying to do anti-Chinese propaganda, xenophobic speeches, blaming Chinese people and Chinese citizens of the United States, for what the government of a country they've never lived in has been doing, everyone rightfully called him racist. When Joe Biden does it, so brave, so brave, just doing what needs to be done. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that weird? I don't know. Anyway, let's read this article. Now that we've done the catch up, now that we've played catch up, let's jump in. Health experts voiced concern Wednesday over the rapid growth of the new Omicron sublineage, XBB15, also known in some virologist circles as the Kraken variant, advising the public to stay informed, but not alarmed, as they work to learn more. <laughs> informed, but not alarmed. What the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? Informed, but not alarmed. Now, hurricane is coming. It's gonna fuck us up. Cat five, cat six, cat seven. It's a new super hurricane. It's like five hurricanes that like combined and now it's the size of Texas, right? That hurricane's gonna fuck us up. Imagine government officials saying, stay informed, but not alarmed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus Christ, okay. Over the month of December, the percentage of the new COVID-19 infections in the United States caused XBB to rise from an estimated 4% to 41. Once again, it reached 1% prevalence halfway through November. That is a stunning increase, Dr. Ajish Jha, so-called, I should say, Dr. Ajish Jha, the so-called White House, so-called, quote, COVID-19 response coordinator, wrote in a Twitter thread. Do you think the White House was aware of XBB15 on November 17th? The CDC was. The CDC was analyzing just how dangerous this variant was. Do you think they told the White House? What about November 18th? 
Why didn't this so-called doctor release this Twitter thread on November 18th, the week before Thanksgiving, and the day after the CDC reported uh, internally that it had reached 1% prevalence? Why is that? The so-called White House COVID-19 response coordinator, are, am I supposed to believe that this guy, who is the so-called White House, so-called COVID-19, so-called response, so-called coordinator, just wasn't coordinating with the CDC for a month and a half? A month and a half. Wasn't coordinating with the CDC? He didn't know? Or is it that he did know and he participated in the cover-up? Millions of dead motherfuckers in this country. Millions of dead motherfuckers in this country. Officials at the World Health Organization shared similar thoughts on Wednesday. We are concerned about its growth advantage. Said Maria Van Kerkhove, an epidemiologist who is at the HOE's technical lead on COVID-19. Now, I just want to say this. My same criticisms of the CDC also apply to the World Health Organization. What the fuck are they doing? These people are bought and paid for by genocidal maniacs? Hey, I don't want to sit here and tell you that these people are as bad as Adolf Hitler. But did Adolf Hitler kill anyone? Think about it. No, no, no. This is not Holocaust revisionism. Hear me out. Did Adolf Hitler kill anybody? No, he directed other people to kill people. And then they did. They were just following orders. Then what happened after the Holocaust and World War II? We had the Nuremberg trials and all of these Nazi soldiers were sitting and saying, I was just following orders. Wasn't me, it was the guy up top. And you know what we did? We hung those motherfuckers in the public square. That's what we did. So I ask you this. Is Rochelle Walensky the genocidal freak in charge? Or is she just following orders? And also, part two of that question, does it fucking matter? How many millions of motherfuckers have died in the world from this pandemic that was easily preventable? Because people at the CDC in the United States or the WHO failed to do their job. But did they really fail? Did they really fail? Or were they bought and fucking paid to keep their yap shut? Think about it. Millions of dead motherfuckers. Now, again, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to engage in any sort of Holocaust revisionism. The Holocaust is horrible. But what I want to say is that we can rightly say that the Holocaust is terrible. And we also can rightly say that this pandemic is purposeful and intentful genocide. It's genocide. I don't know what to tell you. This is a genocide. Who are the most targeted populations? Poor people. Disabled people. Elderly people. For the first couple of years of the pandemic, black people are the victims. Rich people, they're fine. When's the last time you've seen a rich person die from COVID? Hmm? Think about it. When's the last time a rich person has died from COVID that you've seen in the news? Does anyone know? When's the last time a poor person has died from COVID? Well, according to the statistics, a poor person died during the time that you have been watching the stream or video. And if you really want to look at statistics, several dozen poor people have died in the last hour. How many rich people have died? Now, I have a question. Is it genocide? If I know that there's a hurricane coming and I don't tell anybody? Maybe not. Maybe that's just neglect. Is it genocide if I know a hurricane is coming and I only tell my white affluent neighbors? Is that genocide? Yes. And that's what's happening in this country. This is genocide? 
This is genocide. They are systematically, willfully, intentfully committing a mass slaughter of minorities, disabled people, black people, poor people, etc., indigenous people, immigrants, etc., knowingly, intentfully, systematically committing a genocide. Now, a lot of people get triggered when I say that. They get, oh, you gotta move on. Americans are so fucking stupid that they're marching along with the genocide. Only 15% of this country has gotten the recent bivalent booster shot. 15% of this country. Now we ask, how did the Holocaust happen? How did everyone allow the Nazis to take power, to build death camps, and to systematically kill Jewish people, immigrants, gay people, etc.? How did we let that happen? How did people stand by and allow for that to happen? Hey, we don't need to ask those questions anymore. We don't. We don't. We know how. Just go outside. Go to the grocery store and count the amount of people that you see wearing masks. And the amount of people that you see not wearing masks. That's how. This is purposeful, intentful genocide by the rich. And Americans are marching in lockstep. They agree. The majority of Americans, and if you look at vaccination status, 85% of Americans agree genocide is good as long as I get to have my Wendy's. I'm pro-genocide as long as I can get my hair cut. Fuck all the black people, disabled people, indigenous people, and immigrants as long as I can go to my car show and gun show. That's the average American, 85%. Not even average. That is almost every American in this country. They are fine killing other people so that they can get a haircut. American exceptionalism, folks. Van Kirkhove noted that XBB15, which was first detected in the United States, has spread to at least 29 countries and is the most transmissible form of Omicron to date. Quote, we do expect further waves of infection around the world, but that doesn't have to translate into further waves of death because our countermeasures continue to work. Do they? Do they? What countermeasures? Vaccination? Well, I don't know about the worldwide numbers. But in America, only 15% have gotten the most recent vaccine for the most recent versions of this virus. Only 15%. And we know that the vaccine does not prevent infection. We know that the vaccine only really prevents hospitalization most of the time. So, if only 15% of people are getting a shot that prevents hospitalization and death, what does that do for the other 85? Now, I'm going to go out and say a couple more things here, and I'm going to wrap this into another one of my favorite topics. And feel free to share this video, by the way, with anybody that you think needs to have this information. Food. What? I thought we were talking about COVID. We are. Food. Did you know that 95% of Americans do not eat fruits or vegetables? I ask you this question. When's the last time you've eaten a fruit or a vegetable? I'm not talking about Capri Sun. I'm not talking about whatever bullshit processed fucking garbage lettuce on a hamburger. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real fruit, real vegetables. 90 5% of Americans do not eat fruit or vegetables. 93% of Americans have metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? 
Metabolic syndrome essentially means your body is fucked up. It's a symptom, it's a cluster of symptoms that mostly result in inflammation and reduced immune system. What happens when you eat junk food every day of your life is your gut microbiome is in pieces. Did you know that there are trillions, possibly quadrillions, of bacteria that live inside of your body? I ask you this question. Kings, queens, royalty, if they were eating all the food and starving the peasants, and the peasants started to revolt, would you blame them? Would you blame them if the peasants went into the castle and murdered that king, beheaded that motherfucker because they were being starved? Because that's what's happening in your body. If you are 95% of Americans, that is what's happening in your body. When you eat junk food, which Americans eat every single day, what's happening is you are poisoning your body. Okay? What's happening is the bacteria in your gut, in your intestines, etc., are not being fed. So what do they do? Just lie down and die? Well, evolution and life doesn't work that way. When it comes to evolution, those creatures that are willing to lie down and die don't procreate, right? They don't divide. They don't create offspring. They don't whatever. So the bacteria in your body that laid down and died are gone. And what's left are the bacteria that are going to fight the system, the revolutionaries. And how do they fight the system? By eating you. If you do not feed the bacteria in your gut, they got to eat somehow. And what they do is they eat you. And that is why a lot of Americans deal with chronic inflammation. What is inflammation? Your body's immune system is constantly being strained because it is fighting off bacteria that is eating you from the inside. 93% of Americans are having this happen in their body right now 93 percent. you don't believe me look at the fuck up so when we live in a country where 95 percent of americans don't eat fruit or vegetables and 93 percent of americans are having their own bacteria colonies eating them from the inside wasting their own immune system resources guess what happens COVID walks right in. Let's get back into the guard tower, watchtower, compound analogy. Let's imagine, right, you got to break into this like heavily guarded fortified fort, right? It's got watchtowers. We got snipers. There's no way in hell you're going to get, they got searchlights. There's no way you're going to get in there. They got mines everywhere. You can't get in, but you got to get in somehow. You're COVID. That's your mission. That's your life mission. You got to get in. Now imagine if all the guards, all the snipers in the watchtowers, all the, you know, drones, all the turrets, whatever you want to imagine in your action film video game fantasy, imagine if they all turned inside the castle, inside this fort, and they started shooting and defending an onslaught from the inside of the fort. Guess what would happen? Their defenses are down and COVID takes advantage and walks right in. So why is it, by the way, that you have never seen? Never. Has Anthony Fauci talked about our diet? No. Has Rochelle Walensky talked about our diet? No. Has Joe Biden talked about our diet? No. As Ajiz Jha talked about our diet? No. As Van Kerkhove, Maria Van Kerkhove talked about our diet? No. None of these people give a fuck. 
The CDC, have they talked about our diet? Nope. The Centers for Disease, what is a disease? Well, chronic diseases such as metabolic syndrome, that's a disease. Why doesn't the CDC try to control and prevent that? Because it's intentional. That's the point. You are being murdered on purpose. Processed food companies buy government officials so that they can continue to poison you. And it's a win-win. The government gets paid and any potential revolution or overthrowing of the government is put at bay because 93% of Americans are sick all the time. 93% of Americans do not even know what being healthy feels like. Think about that. So 93% of Americans, a lot of them might walk around thinking they're healthy, but they're not. They might walk around thinking that they're good to go, but they're not. Why? Because it's been normalized. They've always felt that way. Well, I'm not actively, you know, sneezing and coughing, so I must be good to go. And do Americans think about this stuff? No. Because those same government politicians that got bought and paid for by the food industry got bought and paid for by other industries and of putting their ideology into our schools. Have you take have you been to a nutrition class in school? If you are, chances they told you low fat's the way to go, high carb, low fat. That's what schools were teaching up until a couple of years ago. High carbs, low fat. That is and I shit you not, the exact opposite of what we need. They told you the opposite. Now imagine a gun safety instructor told you that the best way to use your gun is to always make sure it's loaded all the time and to always point the gun at people if you don't intend to shoot. Hell, what if a gun safety instructor said the best way to hold a gun is by pointing it at yourself? You'd feel pretty fucking stupid if you listen to that guy, right? Chances are, you're in the same position when it comes to your diet. So isn't it weird that the most effective way to boost our immune system is ignored by the people that are theoretically in charge of helping us? Little strange. So you can read this, you know, he's just saying, yeah, it can slip past our immune defenses. Wow. I wonder why. I wonder how. Look at this. And if we all do our part, he wrote, we can reduce the impact it will have on our lives. That's a, a little fun fantasy story. Yeah. If Americans actually gave a shit, yeah, we could reduce the impact, but they don't. And why don't Americans give a shit? Because you have systematically, you being the government in this instance, have systematically ripped their ability to give a shit out of their body. Yeah, if, keyword, if, if we cared about something, we could stop it. We don't. So we won't. Hopefully another million, two million, three million, five million, ten million Americans die. Right? That's what the government wants. So to all these anti-vaxxer, anti-masker, anti-healthy eating, fucking weirdos, creeps, QAnon freaks. They're skeptical of Big Pharma. And then they're falling right back in to where the government wants them to be. Cold, depressed, dysfunctional, diseased, and alone. The most effective ways to combat COVID-19. One, masking. Wear a fucking mask. Two, 
two. Vaccine. Get the fucking vaccine. Three. Fruits and motherfucking vegetables. So, but that's not going to happen. Because Americans are suicide bombers. Once again, I say this and I mean this with all sincerity. Who is worse? Who is more morally corrupt and evil in a zero-sum fashion? We're talking about facts. We're talking about the real world. 9-11 hijacker or the average American? Who is more responsible for death and illness? A 9-11 hijacker or the average American? Think about it. Think about it. Next time you go to the grocery store, take a look around. And just imagine if all of these maskless weirdos were singing some Islamic song and saying Allahu Akbar. Just imagine, right? Because Americans hate Muslims, so that's why I'm trying to use this analogy. Americans are so fucking racist in this country, so this is the best way I can think of on how to communicate this to the average dumb fuck shit for brains. So, there you go. There's your hour-long COVID so I don't know how long that was. So anyway, 